Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another CounterPoint conversation. This time, we are coming to you live from Shanghai at the Mobile World Congress, and I am delighted to have with me for a quick chat, Mr. Bob Bao, who is the Vice President of the FDD Domain at Huawei. So, Bob, thanks for joining. Okay. So, I think、uh, you know, having walked around the show for the last two days, un unsurprisingly, AI is everywhere.、Mm -hmm. So, we're seeing. Robots, we're seeing cars, we're seeing AI devices, but you know, as this show is for telecom operators, what do telecom operators need to do? How how is the world changing for the telecom operator? In the era of mobile AI, the overall demand for networks has changed dramatically compared to the past. In the past, the network demand was driven by download usage, but in the era of mobile AI, things have changed significantly. We've found that overall network demand has shifted toward a balance between uplink and downlink. Through analyzing global data, we also discovered that the traffic volume of downlink data across networks is still increasing. However, the growth rate of uplink data traffic far exceeds that of downlink data. This is the first major trend we observed. The second trend is we've observed that in certain regional markets, uplink travel is growing at a rate which is doubling every month. This phenomenon is a direct result of the rise of mobile AI applications. Of course, we've also observed that the current network bandwidth is still not sufficient to support some of the ultra-high bandwidth applications, mobile AI applications, such as AI-powered industrial quality inspection and 3D video live streaming. So, based on these emerging trends, I believe the entire network needs to undergo an upgrade spanning three key capabilities. The first upgrade is that uplink speeds also need to reach the one gigabyte threshold by integration of super uplink technologies in the SA network. On existing devices, we can achieve over one gigabit speeds. To support the demand for wireless video backhaul in industrial video AI quality inspection and 3D live streaming scenarios, this is the first one. Secondly, we believe that in the era of mobile AI, we need to achieve a comprehensive AI connection across points, lines, and surfaces. So, for AI application, a connection should not only be provided in urban hotspot areas, areas only, but also needs to be provided at the edge of mobile networks spanning indoors and outdoors. To provide comprehensive mobile AI connectivity to meet the connectivity needs of people, homes, devices, industries, and vehicles. The third point is the network requires an intelligent research. Scheduling system, because in the entire 5G A era and in the mobile AI era, we need to meet all users' demands for differentiated experiences through the 5G A network. We can analyze in real time users' behaviors, habits, and preferences. Then again, in real time, intelligent and dynamic resource scheduling is deployed to meet differentiated experience needs of different users. For example, to meet the high bandwidth demands of business travelers and gaming users, we could provide low latency services. We believe that by the upgrading of these network capabilities, we can use 5G network technology to support the development of mobile AI. This is my suggestion and answer. Thank you. So I think it's clear from your response that things are changing for telecom operators in terms of traffic, and now you know to enable these AI services. They need、uh, new kinds of networks. Yes. And so, what is Huawei doing to enable these、mm -hmm. kind of networks that you just described? Okay. In the mobile AI era, Huawei provides a full scenario, full stack, agentic RAN solution. Through innovations in hardware, software, and architecture, we continuously improve spectrum efficiency, energy efficiency, and overall operational efficiency. On the hardware side, this year Huawei has launched Giga Green products. With this product, Huawei has solved the issue of low scheduling efficiency between different 5G frequency bands through Huawei's proprietary ultra bandwidth beamforming technology. It achieves integrated beamforming across different frequency bands. Resulting in more than a tenfold improvement in spectrum efficiency. Secondly, using zero bit zero watt technology, Huawei's product power consumption when in the idle mode can be lower than ten watts. In the meantime, they also support dynamic wake up functionality. This has improved overall energy efficiency by ten times. This is the innovation for hardware. For software, this year Huawei launched a gigaband solution. We all know that in the FDD frequency band, the uplink and downlink bandwidths are equal. But in reality, in the 4G era, the utilization of uplink it was only one tenth of the downlink. However, in the 5G era and the mobile AI era, 
The overall demand for uplink is becoming increasingly strong. Therefore, operators hope to refarm all sub 3 gigahertz spectrum for refarming to 5G. So in this way, they can effectively utilize the uplink spectrum bandwidth. However, in reality, we also see that all operators during the spectrum refarming process do not want to impact existing 4G users on the network. As they risk losing existing customers, this is the primary concern for operators overall. This is also what they fear most. Huawei, through its innovative Gigaband solution, consolidates all the fragmented sub-3G spectrum by leveraging large virtual bandwidth and using intent recognition-based algorithms. Integrating spatial domains, time domains, frequency domains, and RAT, 4G and 5G domains across multiple dimensions. Here, Huawei has made comprehensive innovations at the same time in terms of scheduling algorithms we've improved the optimization from the hour level to the millisecond level. By doing all these things, it truly enables the network to maximize overall spectrum efficiency. Our comprehensive solution has also been commercially implemented with CMHK in Hong Kong, this enabled TMHK in Hong Kong to launch the world's first five-band NR network. During the testing process, we also observed under the SA network and powered by Gigabank technology, the iPhone 15's user experience increased by 2.28 times. In terms of uplink spectrum, by effectively utilizing uplink frequency resources, the uplink bandwidth increased by over 80%. So in this regard, Gigaband will in the future serve as an effective solution during the transition toward the operator's SA deployment. This is the key software innovation in terms of architecture as we all know, SA networks compared to NSA networks can effectively reduce latency. In the meantime, power consumption of devices can also be effectively reduced. For SA networks, Huawei has also introduced three key innovations. The first innovation is that we can achieve uplink speeds of 1 gigabyte by integrating existing spectrum using CA combined with SUL technology. We can achieve speeds exceeding 1 gigabyte. Huawei and China Mobile Zhensang have also conducted a comprehensive commercial network test together using CA and SUL technology. On the live network, using existing terminals, we can achieve speeds of 1 gigabyte. This is the first innovation. The second innovation is that within the overall SA network, through intelligent orchestration technology, the agent is integrated into the network operation and maintenance process. This drives the entire network to evolve toward an agentic network. This is the second innovation. The third innovation is that we ensure that for our existing users on SA, NSA and 4G networks, their overall user experience and devices is fully dependent on the capabilities of their devices. That is to say, it enables a network to advance ahead of the terminal's capabilities. So these are our three key innovations. Okay, so it sounds like uh, uplink and energy are two of the, the main themes of, of this year's show, which makes sense in this, this era of AI. So I think my last question, and I think it's a, an interesting one, is that when we've gone to 2G, to 3G, to 4G, to 5G, to now 5G advanced, yeah. I think it's not only about the telco and the vendor, it's yeah. about the ecosystem. Yes. It's about the whole industry. Mm -hmm. And so I'd like to know what, you know, how you think the industry ecosystem mm. needs to develop and what has Huawei done to stimulate the growth of this industry ecosystem. Mm -hmm. From Huawei's experience, mobile AI is a booming industry. To achieve significant overall deployment in mobile AI, I believe three areas require effective coordination. The first area of coordination is architectural collaboration. That is to say, on the business side, device side, network side, and cloud side, a unified architecture must be established. On the business side, for mobile AI, it is necessary to define the service quality requirements and experience expectations for mobile AI. On the device side, it must provide intelligent sensing and edge computing capabilities. On the network side, an intelligent pipeline must be provided to meet various differentiated demands. On the cloud side, there must be a provision of massive AI computing power and data processing capabilities. 
across these four layers only by achieving overall architectural coordination, the entire network's development can be effectively promoted. This is the first area for increased coordination. The second area needs more coordination across the entire ecosystem. The mobile AI industry is actually a booming industry. No single company can cover the entire end-to-end -end industry value chain on its own. This requires the entire industry value chain to work together and realize the full vision of the mobile AI era. In terms of the overall business model, we have jointly established a framework of value sharing and risk sharing to drive the development of the entire industry as a whole. The third area for cooperation, in my view, it is the unification of standards. Mobile AI must achieve global development. To this point, it becomes essential to establish a unified standard just as the expert from Okla mentioned today at the Mobile AI Summit. In the impending mobile AI era, we need to establish a unified standard. With a unified standard in place, we also need to establish a unified testing and certification system. Only under a unified standard and certification system, users can understand the service levels and quality requirements of different mobile AI applications. At the same time, mobile operators and mobile AI application providers can clearly understand their future optimization roadmaps. Only then can the entire industry thrive and develop prosperously. I believe that through the unified coordination of these three aspects, the entire mobile AI era will surely usher an explosive growth. This will enable different players and manufacturers in the industry ecosystem to truly capture their value from it. So yeah, I would agree that openness is very important and that it's going to take a lot of partners to make 5.5G mm -hmm. uh, advanced in the AI era work. And like I said, um, I came to GSMA Shanghai about 15 years ago and there were no car companies, no robots, no drones, no LLMs, mm -hmm. and now they're everywhere. So it's very, very exciting and I agree with you. So I think, um, you know, in summary, this for me has been very interesting because there has been so much advance in 5 uh, 5G advanced in China mm -hmm. and Huawei's behind that. And mm -hmm. I think I've learned a lot about, you know, use cases with Uplink and, um, you know, all these other things we've been talking about that should be very interesting to the overseas telcos who are going to push 5G advanced. And I think that Huawei is clearly one of the companies that is leading the charge mm -hmm. for the AI plus 5G era. So I'm very excited. So, Bob, I thank you very much for your time. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the rest of the show. And this was Mark Einstein from CounterPoint for another CounterPoint conversation. Thanks for watching.